welcome everyone. Yeah, welcome guys. Oh, well, we just want to welcome you guys to our creative space tonight. We're very excited to have uh, Justin Abraham with us, um, our good friend and Rachel's husband. So it's going to be a really, really fun night. We'll just kind of start, many of you have kind of been on before, so you know what we do. Um, this is just a space where we just gather once a month, we have a hangout and we are just looking just to spark each other just to learn together just come and be in the spirit and just be creative we've got a face group so you guys can share your own work in there so if anything gets sparked tonight it's a really encouraging space and we're going to jump straight in tonight i'm going to pray and um then my good friend rob townley is going to lead us in some ascension music so just during that time just plug in go deep let's just open our hearts wide just to receive all that god's got for us tonight because it's really amazing to connect and be in the realm together isn't it okay so let's just take a moment guys if you can just start playing rob that'd be awesome okay Father, I just thank you for a single heart on you tonight. We just open to you right now, Lord. Open to your presence. Open to your voice. Come into the realm of your heart, the realm of eternity.
Father, that we are in the ocean of your heart. We are in the limitless flow that you drench us. That you saturate us, that we're soaked in your presence. Thank you that this is the place of abundance. That you are the power within us, the unlimited limited source of power within each one of us. So, Father, tonight we just come, we open our hearts. We ask, Lord, that there'll be no limitations on our minds and that we just learn of you tonight, Lord, all together. Just thank you for this space, Lord. We thank you for Justin and all that he's going to share. And we thank you, Father, for all that you're doing in each and every heart and life on this call, Lord, tonight. We bless your name, Lord. Thank you, Father. Mm, thank you, Father. I'm just going to invite um, a poet on tonight just to um, share a bit of poetry before uh, Justin, we introduce Justin and he speaks to us. So, so um, Cleo's just going to share a, um, a poem that she's written. You're, you're part of the Creative Space Group, aren't you? Can you hear me all right, yeah? I don't want to be deep anymore. I don't want to be wise. I don't want to have nice words to speak. I don't want to change nobody's life. Not by effort, I mean. I just don't want to try. I don't want to be great no more. Not in someone else's eyes. To be honest, I'm just really tired. I'm pretty traumatized. From trying to be accepted in other people's lives. I think I crushed my spirit in an effort to survive. But now I've seen the father and his arms are open wide. He pulled me into rest a while as tears rolled from his eyes. He wrapped his arms around me, his body shaking as he cried. I'm just so happy that you're home, my child. He thundered through his tears. You're all I've ever thought about. I've been waiting all these years just to have you home with me. And now you're finally here. I've got some perfect love for you to cast out all your fear. You're safe and free to be all you are because you're fully wanted. I gave all I have to rescue you. Now you're accepted in the beloved. I know sometimes it's scary when it looks like nothing's changed and memories intimidate you saying it will be the same and the shadows cry out to you saying, I will keep you safe. I know the lies are loud and tempting when you can't see my face. My kingdom is an unseen one and my kingdom comes by faith. Trust me, all things are different now. All things are made new because the power that created life, it overshadows you. So I say yes and amen to my God and my friend and my judge and my king who rules everything. I will live in the light of your love fully free and I give you the right to make alive all of me for your joy, because I know you enjoy all of me. So I will be unimpressive, unexpected. I'll laugh and cry in random places. I'll be shy, I'll be awkward, I'll be weird, I'll be too forward, I'll be brave. And I'll have grace and patience as I learn to take up space because it's not easy having faith that I am safe when I've lost everyone I trusted. But I will do it anyway mm. because I love you. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, that was awesome. Leo, 
really cool. I love that. Thank you so much. Thank you. I love a bit about the overshadowing that overshadows us. That was so beautiful. So we're going to um, invite Justin on now, guys. Shalom. Hello. Welcome, Justin, to our Creative Space group. It's, it's amazing to have you here. Really honoured that you would uh, come and speak with us. Thank you, Janine. And, you know, I love you guys. It's so good to be with you. And feel free to jump in at any time as well, if you need to, Janine or Elizabeth, if you want to comment on anything I'm saying. Um, I'll go for it whenever you want me to. Yeah, just go for it, Justin. That's cool. Great. Awesome. So let's just savor that presence, lock on to that presence that we've already been experiencing and lean into it. Because right there is the creative space in that dimensional realm of the unlimited one. Mm. In union with him, we are complete. In union with him, we access the limitless mind mm. and the limitless heart and the limitless being. Be still and know. Knowledge flows from stillness. Knowledge flows from union. Oneness is the language of the future. Mm -hmm. Oneness is where we become fully alive. So thank you, Yahweh, we engage that oneness, that union. And then awareness comes. So as you expand your senses now, you become aware of the angels, for example, the seven spirits who are in your governmental place. You become aware of the saints and the ones connected to you. You become aware of Yeshua HaMashiach and worlds dimensions, past, present, future, was, is, is to come. You become aware of the realm of eternity that's beyond the heavens, the realm of the architect, the one true God, the one who is above and beyond everything, and you're in him. Mm. So the heavens of heavens can't contain God, but they can't contain you. Because heaven and earth will pass away, but you're born of God. You are in God, one with God. Whew. So it's good to be in the creative space. I'm going to throw a lot of things out here tonight, and I give you permission to question, to disagree, to be powerful. We're not in the celebrity age, and the sooner we move from the celebrity age, the better because we have to come into the, the realm of oneness. The celebrity age is still fragmentation, separation, but we're one body in heaven and on earth. When we can shift from idolatry of people and we can see God's divinity flowing in all of us, we will start to release a frequency, David's tent, that mm -hmm. transfigures our bodies, transfigures creation. I want to talk a little bit tonight about the transition of the age and the creative explosion and energy that's been released from Yahweh into the earth right now, that if you position yourself, you can ride that wave and co-create the waves. So we're in a transition point. Every 2,000 years, the earth transitions on the clock in the stars, and Christian history is full of this. Jesus came when it transitioned into the age of Pisces, the age of the fish sign, fishers of men. We are at the transition from that age into the age of what's called Aquarius, which is about water being poured out. So we're coming into the realm, the age, and they're overlapping right now, 
where water, you, the spirit will be poured out like waters, the knowledge of my goodness, like waters covering the seas. The symbol for that age, Aquarius is someone from the eternal realm. So it's about being in the eternal, in the heavenly, above immortality, the immortal one pouring forth a frequency that transforms the earth. So we're moving from an age of fishes of men into an age of flow. The language of the future is flow. The language of the future is frequency, energy. I will pour out my spirit like waves, like waters. Waters, when you were baptized in the spirit, you didn't literally have water come on you. You had an energetic frequency. We call it water because we're using natural words for spiritual concepts, but it is actually wave patterns. It's quantum physics. It's energy. What did that energy do? It awakened your gates and doors and began to restore what was lost. So when the Holy Spirit came on you, boom, you were sealed with a greater dimension. You were opened, a key turned in you, and your gates and doors opened. And often that people prophesy or speak in tongues because there's an overflow through their gates as divine energy electrifies and the frequency what we call the glory the cloud the realm opens through you and you become a river that flows out so you become the source of the flow you become the source of the outpouring and this is how creation's been designed so the bible itself starts with bereshit bara elohim it starts with bait now the bait means in family or inclusion is this letter, the bait, number two. But notice it's, it's got one side that's still missing. The Jews teach this is because God makes creation for us to complete. So we see this in Adam. Adam's first role was to extend Eden and replenish the earth. In other words, creation's been cre created to need you. Creation's been created to need replenishment. It's not self-sustaining without the illuminations of the sons of light. So the first role in Adam, and Adam means Aleph, Dam. Aleph is God's name. Dam means blood. The first beings created in that dimensional framework that carried that record were called God's blood. So they carried the frequency of light. Because God's blood is light. It says, if we walk in the light, as you're in the light, the blood of Jesus cleanses us. So what is the light? It is this, the frequency of the living substance of Yahweh. So we've been called to be releasers. The Adamic call, Aleph Dam, God's blood, the call was to be the releasers of light that replenish creation. So we've been created as the gateway and the gate of light to replenish the earth. Wow. So what I want to talk about tonight is transitioning from all that we've known into that age, the age of light, the age of Aquarius, the age of the outpouring of wisdom, the age of, of frequency, energy, and oneness. So why does the Bible start with bait? It's number two, it's the letter number two, and it means family house in. We've always been in. It doesn't start with the Aleph because it comes from oneness. Oneness produces the light. Oneness, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Let there be light. So the restoration of all things is the restoration of light into creation to cause life, immortality and wisdom and joy to manifest into every structure of creation. That's much more than revival. We're already going way past revival in what I'm talking about. Now, I've just come from a trip where I went to some of the most glorious places in Wales where incredible outpourings happened. I went to the remotest church in the nation where an angel wrestled with David Morgan and he showed up disheveled to preach to the shepherds. And I went to... Daniel Rowland, who was an oracle. I went to Evan Roberts, who carried this incredible fire. But you know what? In all that they accomplished, it is nothing compared to what the Lord wants to release through a company who
who live in union with the divine nature. Mm. And it's hard because I know we want to look back to the familiar. We want to look back to the familiar and we love it. I love it. That's why I went on this tour. But even on this tour, the Lord said, you're looking in the wrong direction. Now, my friend Paul Keith Davis from White Dove Ministries, he's a great guy. I love him and Amy Davis. He had an encounter in a dream, I think it was, where he saw all the different revivals and he saw how everybody looked back. Everybody looked back. And even Evan Roberts looked back to the 1859 revival. 1859 looked back to the 1725 revival. And people keep looking back to Pentecost, the Pentecostals. But in this dream, a voice said, no. And it spoke and said, the pattern is in the future. The pattern for what I want to do is in the age to come. Now, I believe there are some people that touched on this and manifested it like Enoch. Enoch transitioned through dimensions. Enoch had an expanded heart. He could understand all the secrets of heaven. He could stand, understand all the future acts of mankind fully. That's how expanded a human can be. He walked with angels, with Uriel, with Michael, and all these other beings. He traveled through the stars and understood times and seasons, and he faced dimensions. He judged angels and then didn't see death. He said that the things that I've experienced are not for this generation in which I live, but for a remote generation far in the future. I dare to believe we are that generation and the change, and I'm coming into a prophetic anointing tonight, the change that's coming upon the earth is beyond anything we've ever seen before. We are in the time, the Father called it to me, the time of forced change. Change is coming and all we can do is position ourselves to be co-creators, to complete better sheet, complete what he wants to do over the earth. And it means thinking different sounding different, acting different, because as good as those revivals were, they didn't transfigure the animals. They didn't transfigure the trees back to the original blueprint. They didn't transfigure DNA back into youthfulness. They didn't blur boundaries and disappear and appear. They did not do a lot of the things that the Lord's desire is that we come back to the blueprint, which is Yeshua HaMashiach, Adonai, beyond the prophetic, beyond the apostolic, because remember, they're the foundation. We should not keep looking to the foundation. We should look to the capstone and grow up into the head, which means to the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Wow. Okay. So we honor the foundation. We walk on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, but they always saw that there'd be a company God having prepared something better for us that would go far so far out that they are not even recognizable anymore, that they arise and shine. They arise and shine and nations come. What kind of shift does God have in mind for this creative flow, this age of light, this age of energy and frequency where nations will come in a day? What kind of dimensions is God inviting people into the company of burning hearts, the hungry hearts, the desiring hearts who have seen something in the spirit? They can't see it in a conference. They can't see it in a church. They can't see it even in history, because even if they had what was in history, they would not be satisfied because there's something in them that will not be satisfied with the two year outpouring. Or a, or a four-year outpouring, or another wave of Christendom, because inside of them, waiting to emerge, is transfiguration. Transfiguration, Bill Johnson says, is the pattern of the fully renewed mind. In other words, the word for transfigure is the same as the word be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So the way you think determines the world you walk in. If you believe there's prophecies, you can function in prophecy. If you believe that you can write poetry, you can write poetry. If you believe you can heal, you will see healings. When I've believed it and gone for it, I've seen it. If you believe you can blur the boundaries between heaven and earth and walk through the open door, you will ascend. 
If you believe in life and immortality, you will begin to engage it and see something happen. If you believe you have the mind of Christ, you will not let your creativity or intellect, your gender or age be a factor in what you are. Because if anyone's in Christ, they are a new creature. The old is gone and the new has come. I no longer see male or female, black or white or age. I see something that's beyond human definition. Something that all creation, all creation is grown in for it to be revealed. All creation, Yahweh, all creation, every dimension, every frame of existence. So what kind of people should we be in these times? We should embrace the waves. We should be wave riders and engage what he's always what he's doing. See, one of the things we often do as Christians, we ask God for the thing we want rather than say, let me participate and be co-revealed in what you're doing. And what he's doing now is way bigger and further out there. Yahweh. Woo. You guys good so far? Yeah, it's good. Do you want a little bit more or should we, uh, is that enough for one night? Nope. Come on. <laughs> we want okay. to So we're in the, the biggest transition that will ever happen in the history of humanity. In a century and a half, the world is so different from now. People can govern creation. All the weather's governed. There are creative communities all over the world. It's moved to a destiny scroll, well-being economy. It's moved into communities based around what you want to do and what you want to achieve. Everybody's got awareness and cosmic consciousness. Everybody can speak heart to heart through cardiognosis. There's an abundance of food. Crops respond to the spoken word. Creation is in partnership and technology looks like magic. And we're in that time where we're transitioning into that. And there's no way of getting through it through Christendom. Every time that God moves, he puts to bed a paradigm and a model and a way of seeing the world. And the way we've seen the world in church, in meetings, in these structures, in celebrity, in hierarchy, has failed us over and over again. There is something beyond that which is called embodiment of the divine nature or the word becoming flesh. And you expanding into all creation to be one with the entire body of Yeshua HaMashiach throughout space and time, that it moves beyond locality into translocality, multidimensionality. And like Enoch, you are now participating in the great dance, the great dance with animals, with stars, with galaxies, with angels. And you are now in the flow. You are a living movement of divine poetry. You become embodied poetry. You become embodied light. Whoa. So I was taken up in 2010 into heaven and it fundamentally changed me. I was on an airplane and Holy Spirit said to me, would you like to go? And I knew he was loving on me and honoring me. He took me into heaven. This is a shortened version. And I was given this oaky wine. Now, when I drank this wine, I could taste the wine in my body. That's how real this experience was. And it was oak. And when I drank it, I knew I drank Isaiah's scroll, that we will be oaks of righteousness, a planting of the Lord for the display of his glory and splendor. They shall rebuild ruined cities, the places of desolation. They shall be called repairer of the breach, healing the desolation of genetics generations. Yeah. And Enoch spoke to me and he said, all of heaven is conspiring to fulfill the words of Isaiah. Arise and shine for your light has come and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. Where you start to function, not in the old system, the old system, the letter kills, but the spirit brings life. There's a realm beyond everything we're doing right now. And that's what God's calling us into. Where Enoch walked, the Enochian walk, the ascended life, the transmutation of the human species 
wow, into the true blueprint of what we are. Mm. So in this experience, I saw the face of the father from the side and he was looking at the earth and I was in heaven and I looked and all these destiny scrolls were flying out of heaven onto the earth. And they were coming from the legislative assembly of God. Dreams, desires, ideas, songs, poetry, technology, frequency, all going through. And I saw people all over the earth grabbing them and saying, I'll have that. And many of them were not Christians. And that astonished me. People were grabbing ideas, again, infused knowledge, technology, poetry, songs. And I, in the encounter, I was like, Lord, how can this be? I've been told it's always the ecclesia that you're going to use and you're using all these people. And the Lord communicated me to heart to heart. He said, everybody's got a destiny scroll if they'll grab it. Everybody's got a song to sing if they'll sing it. Everybody's got poetry to speak if they'll speak it. It's all coming. There's an overflow. And, and I saw these incredible people like King Cyrus, the Lord said. King Cyrus was a prototype who helped rebuild God's blueprint on the earth, but he wasn't what we know as a Christian. He wasn't what we'd call a religious Jew. He was somebody outside of that. And every time we, we think we know who the insiders are, God moves outside of it. Every time we think we've got it, we've worked out who the members of the church is, he starts moving in the place he shouldn't be, whether it's amongst the Romans or Catholics or Huguenots or Celtic saints. You know, the Celtic people were crazy, crazy people. They were bonkers. They used to paint themselves blue, used to live in the wild. They shaved the front of their heads. The very first monks copied them and they used to shave across the front, not the back. That was came later because they wanted to capture the heart of the wildness, embodiment, being in nature, in creation, the roar, the sound, the breaker. And when they started becoming Christians, they were wildfire carriers. They took on every single system, but they couldn't be bought. They transformed Pickland, Scotland, Wales, Cymru, Cymru, Cornwall, Ireland, through Europe. And they, they did it with light, with energy, with teaching people how to read and write. They educated the Scots. They transformed the nation. And they did it through a realm of government that comes from beyond. They weren't looking at revivalists or they weren't looking at these heroes that we have now. The prophetic movement would seem like puppies compared to these guys. They were living in union. They believed in union. They believed in oneness until the Roman church took over them at the Council of Whitby and crushed it, crushed the creativity, crushed the, the dynamism. And we went into the dark ages as that apostolic flame was swallowed up by tradition, religion and politics. And still today, a lot of the church looks just like that. Because it's, 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 the, it's the remains of a different age. Okay, so we're in the age where wisdom is being poured out like rain. And you can either put an umbrella up or you can dance in the rain. But it sure is raining. Isaiah, um, Enoch saw this. He said, wisdom shall be poured out like water and the glory shall never fail. So what's coming now is the, is the awakening without end. Mm, the awakening awareness without end the whole earth will be covered with what the knowledge what is knowledge awareness we're coming to the age of awareness and it says in psalm 22 verse 27 all the nations will turn and remember what does remember mean remember that you're a member you are connected you come back in the mem is frequency in hebraic it's water, it's frequency, it's energy. You will reconnect the energy. You will reconnect to that body. You will remember. It says all the nations will turn and remember. Wow. So God's vision is for, for the Western world or America first or Britain first. God's desire is for a planet that is David's tent. God's desire is for a species that is awakened. God's desire is for many to become illuminated and wise. And that knowledge is flowing now. Knowledge and solutions are coming where technology will look like magic, where we'll, we'll have limitless energy. We'll be able to do quantum foam energy, um, zero point energy. We'll harness the power of gravity. These are all things I've seen in the future. We will have 
life expansion technology, genetic editing technology, the power of life to swallow up death, an expansion of knowledge and an expansion. I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Now, I was at a prophetic conference in America and they said, that's not all flesh. That's for the church. It's not. I've seen it in heaven. I've seen it in heaven. God, for God so loved the world. For God so loved the world, reconciling the world to himself. This is the grace outpouring. This is the great revealing. To those who've walked in darkness, they shall see a great light arise and shine. Disciple nations, teaching them all that I've commanded you. So wisdom's been poured out and knowledge is expanding. In 1900, human knowledge doubled every 100 years. By the end of 1945, it was 25 years. By the year 2000, human knowledge doubled every two years. IBM estimated soon human knowledge will double. The entire human knowledge will double every 12 hours. Every 12 hours, all we know will be doubling. And that's not just in the natural. That's why the conversations changed in the spirit, where we're talking about courts, governments, archangels, dimensions, bend in space, bend in time, redeem in time, um, gateway technology, and all these other things. The conversation's going huge. The conversation's going massive, just like we've got our iPhones where we can Google. God's saying, arise, ascend into my mind and access the unlimited realm of Love. Mm-hmm. See, the logic of love is life. Mm-hmm. The logic of love is life. The life swallows up death. The revealing of the sons of God has already been described in scripture. It says that we will free all creations grown in to be freed from what? It says it wants to enter into the glorious freedom that we have to be freed from death and decay. In other words, we're going to be alive. Death has to come out of our language. Separation has to come out of our language. Wow. Times and seasons have to come out of our language. Because although there's times in the clock and we can acknowledge that, we are beyond that. We have to be beyond that. Otherwise, we can't govern all creation if we're star locked, earth locked. You know, in the rest of the cosmos, it doesn't matter which Hebraic year it is. I honor the Hebraic year. I love to party. I'm up for it. It's good framing up the next year. But can that define us? No. Christ has come. Christ has come. Christ has come. This changes everything. This changes everything. This changes everything. If we can get to grips with that, that I'm in him, he's in me. Do you know, I was praying yesterday and I was so caught up. I didn't know that it was nighttime. I'd been praying in the daytime. And when I came around, I was sitting in the dark and I thought, wow, I didn't even notice the times. Because when you're in that realm, that time cannot define you. That time cannot contain you. That time has no record of where I was and the energy I was in and the place I was in the spirit. Oh, Woohoo! I know time's nearly up on talking about time. Time is nearly up for this call, but I'm going to just keep going for a little bit longer. So to the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Any theologian that's bringing a doctrine of decrease to the kingdom is contradicting the testimony of Yeshua. He said it would be like a mountain that would continually grow until it's the greatest of all mountains. He said it's a mustard seed that will become the greatest tree until all the birds of the earth nest in it. There is not a single verse where Jesus says it's going to get worse and go backwards. He does talk about the the tribulation coming on the Jews, which happened. But he says the kingdom age is a realm of expansion. Or to quote Bill Johnson, the kingdom only knows forward expansion. It has no reverse on this train. It has no backwards on this train. And every day it's invading. 
no matter how much people frame up bad end times, no matter how much people say the world's going to get worse, every day more people get fresh water, more people get educated, more people get clothes, more people get electricity, more people get better food, more women's rights come on the earth. Okay, it steps back in Afghanistan, but the testimony of the world is it's moving towards love. It's yeah. moving towards human yeah. dignity. It's moving towards being clothed. It's moving towards prosperity and honor and joy. Why? Because Jesus said the kingdom is like leaven that is working its way through every system. It's working its way through. Woo! So we've been called to bridge the future and the past. We stand in the gap between what is ending, the Tav, and what is beginning, the Aleph. We stand in the convergence point of manifesting dreams. So I've drawn this, and some of you have seen this before. This is Aleph, this is Tav, the end of the alphabet, the number 22. We, we've been in the end times. <laughs> so what is the end times? It's another word for the crossover point to the beginning, the Aleph. In other words, why has our language been end time language? Why has our language not been Aleph language? Aleph, the Lord our God is one. The Lord our God, the creator of all, the unlimited one. So our role is to stand between these and bring the Tav to completion. So Tav, number 22, means to come to fullness, completion, or your full purpose for which you were created. So that's great. But at the same time, we sit in the dimension where we engage the power of the age to come and we are bringing what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, what has not entered into the realm of our hearts because it's not been here. Like when gold just broke out and diamonds broke out in the 90s and, the, and in the last couple of decades, that had never been heard of in those previous moves. But this stuff going to come from heaven, the Lord told me, that's never been on the earth before, ever. Your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. So I asked the Lord for an example. He said, well, the rainbow is an example. He said, before Noah, it was contained in the unseen. At the crossing point of generations, his faith created a window, an ark, for it to manifest upon the earth and save the earth. So shall it be now. There are things coming out of the realm of spirit that no eye has seen. You're going to have experiences that you've never even heard of before. There's going to be metamorphosis. There's going to be transmutation of matter. There's going to be transfiguration, blurring, disappearing. Some people will be given permission to live in heaven and come to the earth periodically. There'll be some people that fully disappear physically from the earth in this age. And there will be appearances from that realm of, of prophets and saints and oracles because we're in the age of the convergence or the blurring of the realms. We're returning to oneness. We are returning to the Aleph. We are returning to union, communion, enveloped, enfolded, the dance the life flow, the endless energy, passion, fire and glory of eternity, not a move of God, but the move of God, which is creation. Mm, wow. That all the galaxies are turning, all the worlds are moving, all the stars are uh, rotating right now. And we are entering back into our primordial position where we stand fully identified in the new creation. The kainos never been seen before creation. So God wants to do things that have not entered into, into our hearts. The testimony of the prophets is this. If you've dreamed it, you've dreamed too small because he wants to do exceedingly abundantly above what you can ask or ever dare to think. How? By the power in you. So in other words, it's not going to happen apart from you becoming who you actually are, manifesting who you actually are, unshackling from the limitations and all the things have been said about you, they have been co-crucified with Christ. I no longer live. We live the Trinitarian flow where it doesn't matter what my education is or where I've been or what revivalists think of me or what churches accept me. I've been born of God. I've come from the realm of Yeshua, the Trinity, Yahweh, Adonai, Hashem, I'm born from there. I'm expressed from there. I am not 
defined by Christianity. I'm not defined by Judaism. I'm not defined by Britishness or British passports. I am born from above, functioning from above, descending from above into this realm to manifest and co-create the future. Yeah. Whoa. So God's looking, in summary, for conduits of life. He is looking for those who will co-create the better sheet and complete what has to be completed. They're called the restoration of all things spoken of by the prophets. And what he is dreaming for us is beyond anything. It says in this 2 Corinthians 3.18, nothing between us and God. Our face is shining with the brightness of his face. And so we are transfigured like the Messiah. Nothing between us and God. Every theology, theology of separation is a lie. Every theology that says God's gone is a lie. The, the question is, is will you come in and function? In him I live, in him I move, in him I have my being. And those who are wise because the fruit of this is wisdom, shall shine. And the, like the brightness of the heavens, and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. So encoded in this, in its intrinsic technology, is immortality. It says you'll shine like stars forever and ever. So the wise ones, illumination, ascension, and righteousness, the fruit of it, is the life and the fruit of this coming move will be that many do not see death. And we will know we're beginning to go into the age of the Aleph when we begin to see regeneration of human bodies, lifespan expansion, restoration of genetics, and those who do not taste death, do not function in death, do not have a language of death. They live in him, move in him, and they're going to begin to break all human limitations because Satan came to kill steal and destroy Yeshua came that you might enjoy life and life to its fullest measure abundance until it overflows until we become again the streams that make glad the city of God we become the place of the overflow and that's going to be creative technology it's going to be energy it's going to be diet education all those systems that we know and are familiar with are on their last legs and God is looking for a company of people to come through who do not tether to it, but they see us over. Mm. They see the way we do politics is over. It doesn't matter who's in government anymore. It really doesn't. It's still a mess. It's still the big empire system. It's still the war machine. It's still the banking system. It's still corruption. It's still corporate tie-ins. There's something coming called the kingdom. And there are a company of people who will be tethered to kingdom and the king. And they will say the king has come and the king will be manifested through them. And he will come in them. It says when he appears, you shall appear with him in glory. This is called the unveiling. Of reality, the apocalypse, the unveiling of realms that the whole world will see. Arise and shine for your light has come. So we are called to engage this realm with every bit of passion we have, determination we have. Now is not the time to slumber and be asleep. Oh, yes. Now is not the time to be unconscious or addicted to the culture, addicted to the politics or media. Now is the time for the addiction to the <laughs> beloved. Mm -hmm. the kiss of his mouth mm. and the honey of his lips to be your singular dev devotion. And those who wait mm -hmm. on the Lord will renew their strength and they will rise up. Yesterday, when I was caught up in the heavens, do you know what I did? I set a clock and I said, for half an hour, I'm just going to sit doing nothing, waiting on the Lord. And, and I said, Lord, you can take me anywhere you want. Those who wait on the Lord will rise up. 
and then everything changes. Everything changes. What the Lord is offering us is way, way beyond. And I know it's offensive. I know it's hard. I know I love the past too, but the past didn't transform creation. There is more. There is something coming that has to transform energy. So we're no longer, even the electric batteries is a lie on cars. The Lord told me cars can run off fresh air. We don't need to plug them in. It's all a system. It keeps rebooting over and over again. (laughs) But there's a company coming who see and they walk with wisdom and they see with clarity and they brought birth the realm of love, Mm. the realm of life. And we will say again, he makes all things beautiful and it's time. And it's time for that. It's time for a company that sever their connection to the past. I know we, it's hard, but let go. Trust the wind and become a cloud rider because the future is beyond your wildest dreams. Thank you, Yahweh. Well, I've only said a fraction of what I was going to say, but let's engage that realm now. Because the realm is so simple that even a child can come into it. It's simply this. We let go. We breathe, which is ruach. Lean in. Breathe and go up into the light. You don't have to see anything. Just go into the expanse. And breathe. And breathe. Hineni, I am here. Haya, I am the being. Hine, here I am. I have come to do what was written in the books, <laughs> in the future acts of mankind. I see my name. And I've come to do what is written in the books. Mm. Untethering from the song the world gave me to sing and tethering into the rhythm of love where life swallows death. Engage in life, walking arm in arm, opening up my heart. Now, guys, it's open. Just look. Look to see. Just look. I'm seeing right now, and I haven't seen this for for 10 years, I'm seeing the future acts of mankind. I'm actually in the place Enoch took me, where I see the books open. You are in those books. You are in those books. You are in those books. And it's time to live out of that book. Not what the church told you, not what the education system told you or your parents told you, but living from the words of life that are written in the heart of the Trinity. Lean into those books. Lord, Mm. I have come to fulfill what is written. We honor Isaiah, we honor the words. We say yes to the scroll of Isaiah. We say yes, and this is a hard one, guys, it's gonna challenge you. We say yes to the impartation and activation of Elijah. It's hard to accept it, I know. But we have to receive a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Father, we let go now of all that can be shaken. 
and we lay hold of that for which you laid hold of me. Thank you, Yahweh. 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 Now, I want to say, you know, as I'm landing now, I'm handing back to you, you're all powerful to think differently. This is the walk that I've had with Yahweh and what he has taught me from above. And the things that I've given you today, I've not heard from here, this world. I've heard from 15 years of pursuing union with him. And he has shown me the future and he's shown me these things. How it will outwork, I don't know, but I know who we think we are is going to radically change. Mm. You will look in the mirror and say, I don't even know you. And you will do things that you never dreamed were possible. And there are things coming upon the earth that are so glorious, we will tremble at his goodness in the last days. We will tremble because we are going to see things, you are going to see it happen, that never imagined this could happen. And we will say he is good. He is good. And the knowledge of his goodness, which is his glory, will cover the earth. Mm -hmm. The old version of God that we've held on to is going. Mm -hmm. Because we, did, we made him too small and we didn't realize how good he was how good the Trinity is. And we're going to see that God is love. God is light. In him is no darkness at all. It will challenge Christianity to the core. But in doing so, it will open up the vats of wine. Mm. And the trees of the field shall clap their hands. And you'll go forth with joy. Thank you, Yahweh. I'm a believer. I'm a believer. Just agree with me, guys. I'm a believer. We are believing believers. We've seen Jesus. We've seen Jesus. I won't accept any bad prophecy. I believe for the kingdom. Mm. The kingdom, which is righteousness, peace, and joy. Mm. And I, I align my life to the kingdom. Mm. Yes. Thank you, Father. Whoo! Mm. Now the realm's so open right now. Just stay in it. Stay in it because this is your home. This is your home. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you having me on this creative space. Thank you, Justin. Thank you. That was so awesome. That was so expansive. Yeah, Father. I just, I just feel in it. I don't know about you guys, but I can just feel that, that like Justin said, that realm is so open. And I can just hear the, you know, the song that he sings over us um, and that we <clears throat> right now as, as we're in this realm, we just come into agreement with his song that says you will be the ones who will shine brightly like the sun. Come on. Fans of the heavens. Come we have fans of the heavens within our very being. Come we on. have a limitless one within our very being. Come so, on. Just come into an agreement with that sound, with that song. We remember uh -huh. that, sound, that song, that frequency. Let that frequency just come over you, you everyone, right now. Mm. Oh, that you expand. Yes, yes, yes. Our minds, off our bodies, off our thinking. Mm. Our yeah, what we think our abilities are and we just come in a total 
agreement with that song, with that frequency of life right now, Father. Yahweh. Thank you, Father, that you're changing the song from generation to generation. There's a new song. There's a new sound that is coming from us, Lord, and that we're just we're just coming to agreement. That's that's what our destiny is. That's what everyone here's destiny scroll is. Just to come into agreement with that song and to release that song out in whatever way the Lord has called you, whether that's writing, poetry drawing that's right building architects you know yeah. one of the things i saw in the future was architecture is going to radically change in fact every product that's created is going to be so different i saw people doing beautiful things on buildings they were putting things that move and like mm-hmm. all kinds of colors and in the future there's there's nothing that's boring the whole world people just love doing things that are beautiful and that's got to awaken now because we got we have to set the standard now for what that world's going to look like, you know. And wonderful things are going to happen to our bodies. We're going to be able to regrow our teeth. Um, mm-hmm. Our hair will have a have a silky sheen to it. Um, there's going to be loads of things unlocking in genetics. Can you imagine a move of the spirit through us mm. where genetics changes? Like yeah. I was shown there'll be new hair colors, for example, ones we don't have now. Yes. Can you believe that you're in, a, in, in a, you're out walking and you're in union with God and you pray for someone and their hair color changes? Can you imagine somebody's body being renewed? They're renewed like a wild ox and they get younger. This stuff got Papa God's dreaming. What about animals? What is our relationship going to be like with them, with horses and dogs and cats? What's it like when they start to get activated and come into the life that we have? We know it's going to happen because it says the lions will eat straw. Mm. So there'll be a genetic change on an animal. Yes. Yeah, we're coming into the realm where genetic transmutation is going to happen. And that's a realm of government that God wants to open up called the healing of the desolation of generations. What about singing a song that changes genetics? Because worship is going to be a big part of this. The Lord showed me there is a frequency coming on it and a power coming on it. That's not been there before. As good as the songs have been, we'll look back and say they were nothing compared to the realm that's on the sound that's been released. It's not just going to be a new song. It's a realm of power. It's a realm of, of transfiguration that God's going to start to release through his people. Wow. Which will change cities overnight, change the frequency of cities. So come on, you poets, you songwriters, you singers, it's in the realm. Mm. It's in the realm. Wow. Do you know what happens? The more of us that pull it through, the more it diffuses. Mm. It's called the law of honor. What you honor, you attract. What we govern is released. What we loose is loosed. Thank you, Father. Your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And it says his resting place shall be glorious. And he will glorify the house of his glory, which is your body. Lord, we pull right now on genetic reconfiguration. And we agree as the ecclesia that this is our inheritance. Mm. We're the heirs of the promise. Lord, I call now for genetic changes in your body. Mm. Wow. Healing, trauma, yeah. epigenetic history, wow. aging, yeah. decay. Yeah. That he will glorify his house. Wow. Mm. You are that house. Mm. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Thank you, Yahweh. Thank you, Yahweh. Mm. We love you, Jesus. 
We do. We love you, Jesus. We fix our eyes on Jesus, mm -hmm. the author and the mm -hmm. Aleph Tav. Mm -hmm. He is the Aleph and the Tav. Mm -hmm. If you want to understand the end and beginning times, look. Cast your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his lovely face. Mm -hmm. and the thing of this, things of this world will grow strange. Be dim in the light of his glory and grace. Lord, we honor Yeshua. We are a generation who are one with you in motion, heart, and rhythm. Thank you. Wow. Wow, the true head. The true head of the church, which is his body. Mm. Thank you, Yahweh. Woo. <laughs> Can you feel that? It's just so dense and powerful and in <laughs> yeah thank you yahweh yeah thank you Father. thank you yahweh yeah and love remains <laughs> whatever's established in love will remain but everything else will pass away mm. thank you father mm. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Let's let's just let that hit our, our being. Let's just absorb that fully in. I know we could transition to questions now, but sometimes you just got to go with what God's doing. And I don't know if you can feel that realm around you right now. I, I certainly can. Let, let's yeah. just let's just drink that in. You know, he soaks us, he saturates us, he permeates our being. He's so abundant. Thank you, Father, that you do, you are the power within us that does far more than we can ever think mm. or imagine. You are that indwelling presence, Lord. Realm around Thank, you, Yahweh. Thank you, Father, for what you're doing right now. Thank you, Yahweh. Thank you, Father. Mm -hmm. Wow, it's the riches of his glory and it's the wealth of his house. It's amazing. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. What you're doing in each heart on here tonight, Lord, and I pray that you begin to just let that be revealed in us as we go on now until we meet next month I, I pray that it would be something that the truth would gather momentum within us that we would embody all that has been added to our spiritual house tonight father we just thank you we honor you we bless you glory to you oh lord Yes. So amazing. We love you, Father. Yes. For all that you're doing is so exciting and glorious. Thank you, Father. So we're going to land it there. <laughs> it's been really cool, isn't it, tonight, guys? It's been so, so deep. I know um, I'm really whacked, I'm sure. I'm sure you guys are as well. Um, we, we, should, we always want to bless... Um, our visiting kind of um, guests. So I think Rob has probably posted my link on there. We're going to um, bless Justin. And if you want to add to that, you can, or you guys know um, you've got that direct details on their website, but we would just love to, to bless Justin and just to sew into what has been released as well. It's really amazing it's it's a heavy heavy revelation it's the future like we've been framing up the future mm -hmm. and we and it's been epic to just be a part of it um so if you if you would like to join us to do that you'd be really welcome to do that um 
we are going to be meeting on the 19th of October next next time. And uh, do you want to add anything, Elizabeth or and Rachel and Rob? I couldn't find Rob either. <laughs> I have nothing. I'm terrible add. at the techie bit. I'm so sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Good job. None of you have got kind of orphan issues because this would be so bad. <laughs> it's all good it's all good oh my gosh it's so wonderful it was such a deep place well it still is still a, such a deep place of love and I could just see that like oh this this just it's beyond our imagination it's beyond our dreams like Justin said it starts it's time to start thinking beyond you know, it's that I could see these sparkles. Is you can't even quite describe it. It's time to just be in that realm and to grab those those sparkles, or however, however you see it, because God will speak to you differently. But just to grab those sparkles and start to express it in whichever way He's given you to express it in, and encompass it in love, and to ask those questions: What would love look like? Everything we engage with, everything that we see, every person we meet whether that's just nature, creation, people, everything we encompass, just what would that look like if we loved it like Jesus loves? Thank you, Justin. It's awesome. Yeah, thank you, Justin. Do you want to mm. Elizabeth, go for it. You're, you're, you're better at ending than me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very good at ending things. <laughs> I, I, thought, I thought we already ended. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, let's see everyone's faces. I haven't got gallery on. Oh, we love you guys. <laughs> we love you. We bless you. Stay in this place of union, of just awakening. This is the place that never ends. This is the realm that never ends. This is not an event. This is uh, this is where we live, and this is this is the future that that we live in this place and so we just bless you we just bless you as you cultivate um, awakening and living in the place of union we love you guys and uh, we will see you in october looking forward to it we love you see you next month everyone bye guys bye, -bye. <laughs> bye. awesome <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.